I saw The Watchers last night. Is it worth the watch? Let me help. I sound like a cheesy commercial. The Watchers is the directorial debut of Ishana Knight Shyamalan and stars Dakota Fanning as Mina, an artist living in Ireland who ends up stranded in a remote forest. She finds three strangers who are stuck in the forest as well and stalked by mysterious creatures that only come out at night. The movie is based on the 2021 novel of the same name by A.M. Shine. And as this is based on a book that I've read. This will be a little bit longer than my kind of like quick, should you watch spoiler free movie reviews. I'll start off with the norm for those of you that are watching just to see whether you should spend your theater time on this. And then afterward, I will go into my book movie comparison that will include spoilers. So let's talk about the film first. Spoiler free, of course. I felt this was okay. I always enjoy the folk horror genre and I love how Speaking very vaguely, because this can encompass so many different things, uh, this movie involves fey lore. I feel like that's something we don't see very often in horror movies. And I also kind of enjoyed the onion-like story, you know, there's layers, there's things that get peeled back and revealed. Like it starts off relatively simple with just this fear of there is something out there to get me. And then as secrets are revealed, things start to unfold, it all gets a lot more complicated and a lot more sinister. This just felt super shallow and super rushed compared to the book, which kind of is to be expected when it's a book to movie adaptation, especially for this book too, because one of the main differences is that there's multiple POVs. So you really get to delve into each character and hear their thoughts their dreams, their aspirations, etc., their backstories. And that is simply impossible to achieve with this movie without it being like three plus hours long. So of course the focus should be on Mina. She's the main character. But I feel like her character development was even strange. They introduced things about her that honestly have no payoff later on in the film. That in her dialogue was super cringe at times. Early on, she asks the bird, all of a sudden out of nowhere, she's just like, so what's your story? <laughs> like, just out of nowhere whilst driving the car. It was almost giving like quirky girl. I don't know what was going on there. And there are other things that are introduced once Mina gets to the coop that also never come up again in the movie. There's a whole scene about medicinal plants that Kira collects that it, it's never to be heard of or seen again. <laughs> Even the rules of the coop are immediately broken by Mina, which kind of takes away from the severity of breaking the rules in the first place because we barely get to see the like occupants routine when they are following the rules um, and kind of setting up the sinister nature of that and then breaking the rules. <laughs> that that just served to make it feel more rushed as well. It's like Mina immediately shows up and then just starts breaking every single rule. And this is gonna sound a little bit weird for me to say because I feel like readers always want the opposite <laughs> when it comes to their adaptations. But I already knew the twist that was gonna happen at the end. I was kind of bummed that they didn't like change the ending at all. And it's, it's a little, it goes a little bit beyond. I just wanted them to change it just for me or just for everybody who had read the book. Um, but I'll get into that in a second because that's spoiler territory. So overall, for those of you just deciding whether to go see it, I didn't hate the movie. I liked the atmosphere. I loved the setting. I think the movie itself was pretty, like the lighting was good. Like the visuals overall were just really strong. It was just the plot like pacing, the character development, left something to be desired. I wouldn't not encourage anybody to go watch this unless anything that I just said was a deal breaker for you in movies, then maybe not. <laughs> okay, now let's get into the nitty gritty. The biggest gripe I had between the book Mina and movie Mina was like her backstory, I guess. So like, in the book, she's a struggling artist, and so she's trying to make it as an artist, though. So she's like just picking up odd jobs here and there, and that's how she gets this opportunity to deliver a bird, and she's gonna make a couple hundred bucks doing that. So, you know. In the movie, <laughs> she's given this really bizarre hobby where she goes out, she wears different clothes, she puts on a wig, and pretends to be somebody else. And this 
never comes into play later on, except for like the amorphous themes of the movie that you mentally kind of have to just make that connection of, oh, she doesn't want to be herself because of what happened with her mom and she feels guilty. And oh, Madeline's a watcher and she's pretending to be human, kind of like how Mina pretends to be somebody else. Like, <laughs> and this is all like just mental connections that you can make. It literally does not come into play at all later on in the movie. And that's kind of why I was disappointed that they just went with the original ending and didn't tweak anything. Given that setup with Mina's character, I think it would have been stronger, and I'm just spitballing here as somebody who's never made a movie. Maybe during their fight, like Madeline's changing form a bunch uh, during their interaction at Kira's house, right? And at one point she appears as Mina. They could have gotten into a fight with Madeline just fully looking as Mina. Mina gets knocked out. Cut to the scene where Mina is telling her sister everything that happened. That's where the narration is coming from. And then it's revealed at the very last second that Madeline killed Mina in that previous scene and has taken her form now. That would have been an appropriate, ironic payoff to like, oh my God, Mina pretends to be other people sometimes and now somebody's pretending to be her. That was, that was my only little rant about it. I just feel like it was too safe. I feel like they, they really just said, okay, we're just gonna take the material in the book and just make that. And we're not really gonna try and do anything different there. <laughs> that weird character quirk just bugged the shit out of me because it went nowhere. It was a waste of time. It was a waste of time that we could have spent developing other stuff that actually mattered. Other than that, obviously I found the book better because of the multiple character POVs. You get a, a lot more for each character and it makes you either hate them or love them. And so you feel some type of way about them, which personally I just feel like is the way it should be. <laughs> but I'll be interested to hear for any of you that have read the book out there, what your thoughts on it were compared to the movie. If you're still here and you liked this video, you can check out my review of another new horror movie that just came out, The Strangers Chapter One. I will see you next week with some new videos. Until then, stay strange. Bye.